Let's look at Hebrews 11, Hebrews 11, 8, and we're going to get cranked up. Anything else? <coughs> All right, let's do this. Amen? All right, the Bible says, by faith, Abraham, when he was called to go out into a place which he should after receive for an inheritance, obeyed, and he went out, not knowing where he went. By faith, he sojourned in the land of promise, as in a strange country, dwelling in tabernacles with Isaac and Jacob, the heirs with him of the same promise. For he looked for a city which had foundations, whose builder and maker is God. Father, we thank you so much for your word and give you praise for how rich it is and how sweet it is. We pray that we would take our time tonight and uh, that we would uh, uh, receive every morsel and we would not miss a, a single nugget of your word. We pray that we would leave full in the spirit, God. We pray that we would start off 2020 right. We pray that you would bless us, our King, and we ask that if anybody needs to know you in a personal way, that you'd save them here on the spot, God. And we just give you praise for it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, amen. Hallelujah. All right, saints, we've been in the book of Hebrews, amen, and we've been looking at chapter 11 and just going through the halls of faith, the heroes of faith. We talked about Abel. We talked about Enoch. We talked about Noah. And now we're on Abraham, amen. If you can remember, Abraham, whose name was Abram before God changed it, amen. He was called in our Bible the friend of God, amen. He is the one who is referred to by Paul in his Pauline epistles as the father of faith, amen. And Abraham is very important in our Hebrew heritage, amen, because he is the one that, uh, as the commentaries say, our pedigree and our privileges flow from. Amen. Uh, when we start off by talking about the children of Abraham, we, all, we often start off Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Amen. From him flows the pedigree, but also from him flows the privileges. Because from that moment, amen, God gave Abraham some blessings in Genesis chapter 12 that we went over. Amen. And so the blessings that inured to our people and to all even the Gentiles that are engrafted in through the cross of Calvary, amen, those blessings are called the blessings of Abraham. This person that we're talking about is a mighty person of faith, amen, in our Bible. The writer talks about Abraham more than any other vessel of the Most High, amen, uh, in this chapter. He, he consumes more time, more space than Enoch, than Abel, amen? Uh, and so then Noah, he's a mighty figure. Uh, last time we talked about him being called, and we saw that he was called from his family, from his friends, from his home, from his country. We saw Abraham give it all up. And we talked about, amen, that God will often call us away from things. He'll call us away from people from places, from things, amen. But like the Bible tells us, if you give anything up for God, God will give you double for your trouble. He, he'll always restore more, amen, that he took away from you. And so we reviewed those blessings that he exchanged, amen, a divine interaction, a divine exchange between him and Abraham. Abraham gave up some things, but God blessed him with abundantly more. Come on, give y'all some glory, amen. <coughs> All right, so tonight we just keep going, and I want to just stay on verse 8. I'm going to have about two points tonight, amen, talking about Abraham. Point number one is obeyed, and point number two is not knowing where he went. Obeyed and not knowing where he went. And that's coming out of verse 8. We can look at it again. The Bible says in 11.8, by faith, Abraham, when he was called to go out into a place which he should after receive for an inheritance, he obeyed and he went out, not knowing whither he went. So let's begin with our first point, obeyed. All right. The word obeyed is the root word hupa koe, hupa koe in the Greek. And it means, amen, to listen. It means to listen. 
There's a real, amen, uh, 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 highlight on, on the ear, that word. It has, a, it has a real emphasis on the ear, on hearing. It means to listen. But it doesn't mean just to listen. It means to listen with a readiness. To listen with a readiness. You see? It means to listen with a readiness to execute that which is ordered. All right? So to obey means to be attentive and listening. Amen. I'm, I'm not wandering. I'm not in la-la land. Amen. I'm attentive. Amen. When somebody is obedient, they are attentive. They have a good uh, uh, listening habit. Amen. But it's not only to listen and hear because some people hear and they don't do. All right? So to obey means, all, it means two things. It means to, to listen, but with a readiness to execute that which is ordered. Meaning I not only hear you, but I'm going to do what you tell me to do. Come on, give y'all some glory. <coughs> all right? It means to be fully compliant. <clears throat> fully compliant, you know? It means to understand and respond. You see? It's hard for you, to, for you to be obedient if you don't listen. It's hard for you to be obedient if you don't execute. But it's also hard for you to be, to be obedient if you, if you don't understand. See, obedience takes understanding. That's why the Bible says, say, get wisdom, but it also says, get what? Get understanding. Be, be able to hear somebody and not only hear them, but understand what they're talking about. Somebody say, Lord, Lord give, me give me understanding. understanding. You see, we're breaking down what it means to obey. All right? And to be an Abraham, to obey God, and to obey in every other realm and echelon of life, you got to be able to hear. You can't be off in la-la land. You got to be able to hear. You not only have to be able to hear, but understand what you hear. And after you hear and understand, have a readiness to execute that which is ordered. And if you fall in any of those things, because some people listen, some people understand, but they ain't ready to execute. They ain't ready to execute. They can listen, understand, know what you're saying, everything, and then when they get to the, the, to the task, wind up doing something else. And in that, you have not obeyed. You have not obeyed. All right? And what people don't understand is obedience is better than sacrifice. Woo! A lot of people don't understand that. Don't come and tell me the extra mile you've gone until you give me the mile that I asked for. Woo! <laughs> Obedience. Obedience. Do what I'm asking you to do. And that's the way God operates. A lot of us want to go above, want to go beyond. A lot of us want to be flamboyant. A lot of us want to be excessive. And you got people like that. They're excessive with their relationship with God. You'll see them. Their worship is excessive. Their prayer life, excessive. They're the ones that talk the loudest, sing the loudest, dance the hardest. But when you look at their life, obey the least. Oh, God have mercy. Oh, y'all ain't ready for this. Y'all ain't ready for this. I'm trying to tell you something, man. Obedience is better than sacrifice. It's a problem Saul had. Just do what I'm telling you to do. You see, the key to being an Abraham is he obeyed. When God asked him something, he heard it. He understood it. He was ready. And he executed it. That's what you call obedience. And it's a beautiful thing. The connotation of obedience 
means to have both respect and honor for the higher authority. You will not obey anybody you don't respect and you don't honor. It don't matter. It don't matter. You see, see, we were just talking about this in the house, love. We live out of our hearts. He said, God, guard the heart, for out of it flows the what? Issues of life. We live out of here. And I might not be able to open your heart up and see what's in it, but as I watch you live out of it, I could tell what's in it. Oh, God, have mercy. <clears throat> when you don't like somebody, it come out in the way you live. It come out in the way you treat them. It come out in the way you talk to them. When you're jealous of somebody, it come out in the way you treat them. It come out in the way you talk to them. You know? You know when you had something nice when you was young? And your parents would say, don't let son touch over that because they're jealous of it. Don't let them. And the same person you let ride in your car or, or, or get in your new apartment, or ride, they just happened to drop some tropical punch Kool-Aid all over your front seat. <coughs> and you watch it happen and you're like, man, how did that? It was an accident. It was an accident. Listen, it was. It was. But you was living out your heart. You was living out your heart. And out of your heart came what was in it. A carelessness, a, a, a disrespect, a lack of integrity. You, you, you just, you're holding it any kind of way. Oh, I'm getting too deep. I'm getting too deep. Listen, listen. When you learn discernment, you could watch people. Now, now on the Lord's tier, you listen to what they say. But you don't even have to, you don't have to listen. Just watch their body language, B. Just watch how they, watch how they move when you come in. Watch how they, watch how, just watch the body and you're going to be able to tell, oh, something wrong. Something wrong. You see? You see? And you can't obey anybody that's an authority over you unless your heart is right. You got to have a heart full of honor and respect. Now, I didn't say like. Because you can obey somebody you don't like. As long as you respect them. Oh, God have mercy. Because <clears throat> you might have some situations where you don't like the authority over you. You don't like the decision that they're making or the decision that they have made. But you respect them. And you honor them. It's kind of like you take what God say in Romans, amen, and you honor the position instead of the person. Oh, God. Come on now. Meaning I honor my husband, amen, because he's my husband. It ain't got nothing to do with the person. It's got all but to do with the position that, he, that the Lord has placed over me. I honor my parents not because of the person, they work on my nerves. But I will honor the position. You understand what I'm saying? I will honor my mother and my father. All right? Because that's the first commandment with the promise. I'm going to honor and respect my husband. I'm going to honor and respect my mama. You understand what I'm saying? It's an honor of the... You don't have to like somebody to honor them and to respect them. I will honor my boss at work. You understand what I'm saying? I will honor my, 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 my past. I will honor. You see what I'm saying? <clears throat> Not for the person, but for the position. That word right there in the Greek, amen, it, it, it has the, the connotation of honor and respect. Because when I honor somebody, that's when I'm going to be listening. And that's when I'm going to be ready. If I, don't, if I don't honor them and respect them when they walk in, I don't, I'm, my, my body, I'm not trying to hear nothing they say. So I'm not listening. I don't respect them, so when they say something, I'm not moving. When they say something, I'm not executing what they want. I'm going to mess around and do what I want. And that's not obedience. It's not obedience. You see? 
The thing that separated Abraham was that Abraham obeyed. He respected God. He honored God. He was constantly listening for God and eager, sitting on the edge of his seat. There was a readiness, a tenacity with Abraham to do what thus said the Lord. Abraham was an executor of the will of Yah. Come on, give Yah some glory. Amen. So this obey means to respect and honor. Amen. And it's witnessed by external acts of obedience. It's both an inside thing and an outside thing. Amen. And you can see it. It's a very rare thing. It's a very uncommon thing in the age in, we li in which we live in. The Bible says that the faithful man, the faithful man perish of the face of the earth. It's very hard to find somebody like that. And that's why Abraham was such a jewel in the eyes of God. Because whatever to God told Abraham to do, he did it, y'all. He did it. It's uncommon when it, when it comes to people with God, all right? But it's also uncommon when it comes to people with people. It's hard to find people, amen, that's subordinate, that have a readiness to execute commands, you see? And I speak this, amen, as a, uh, as a person of authority, amen, ecclesiastical, but also secular in the marketplace. I, 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 I do run, 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 run some businesses. So it's hard to find somebody that's just going to do what you tell them to do. I, man, I'm being so real, man. I'm being so real. It's easy. Take this bell and put it in the sound booth. You'd be surprised what people do. Well, I think that this bell don't belong. I never asked you what you think. Who asked you what you think? But the bell would be better in the nursery. I never, I never once mentioned the nursery. You know? So from person to person, this, this is an uncommon thing. And if we can get this as a people once again, if we can obey God, and if we could obey, amen, the powers that be as our God declares in the book of Romans, there would be nothing that can stop us as a people. All right? All right? I'm not asking you to like anybody. Feelings come and feelings go. That's subjective. All right? That's, that, they come and go. But what I'm asking is, is that when God puts you under somebody, whoo, how you going to act with that? All right? And so let's look at it here. Amen? With our children in our house, huh? obedience is what we want. Youngsters, listen to me good. A readiness to hear, huh? a listening ear, and a readiness to fulfill the command. An execution of exactly what was said. Amen. That's the way it should be in children. Huh? In the workplace. Boss come through, amen, it's their business. It's not yours. It's not yours. You see, and a lot of times God won't give you yours until you're faithful in somebody else's. Oh, oh, they don't hear me up in here. They... You see, not only in the workplace, amen, in the church, amen. Just a readiness. Just a readiness. I. I never, I, I ain't never came here for you to like me. <laughs> but just to honor and respect the position. That's all it is, yeah. That's all it is. It ain't about Omar. It's about <coughs> the position. All right? 
but also between husband and wife. Now, y'all see I didn't get nothing right now? I heard, I heard one little okay. No, it was just a K. K. An authority, a subordinate, a listening, a readiness to execute. I'm going to do what you say you heard from God. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. And let me tell you, me and my little wife, amen, we, we talk a lot, and I keep my ear down on the women's side of ministry. Amen. And sometimes I hear about what the wives do. I hear about it. She come back and tell me, you know, this one did this. I say, she did What? I said, well, what her husband thought? What her husband said? Well, her husband had actually said that the family wasn't ready for it. And I said, what? She said, babe, what world are you living in, babe? I said, babe, I'm trying to live in the Bible world. She said, oh, no, babe, oh, no. She said, and women would not be able to be married to you, no. <laughs> and now what you tell me? And look at like she threw them though. She said, they wouldn't be married, be able to marry you, yeah. She said, because you know you smile and you all that. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, I smile, yeah. But I understand my Bible, not woman of God. And ain't nothing blessed unless it come through the head. You understand what? Ain't nothing going to be blessed. Ain't nothing going to be. It's got to be order. God love decency and order. It ain't order. It ain't going to work out right. I'm telling you. And when it's not your idea, the man of God come, amen, and he got an idea and he want to roll with it, there should be a listening, a readiness, and an execution. An execute like it was your idea. Okay, y'all don't want to do this one too much. <coughs> I'm going to move on. I'm, I'm, I'm good. Oh, yeah, Pastor. Amen. Move on. You hear it, Cole? I'm trying to help you, woman of God. I'm trying to help you. You don't get blessed in confusion. You do not get blessed in confusion. You don't get blessed in confusion. When you learn this right here, when you learn this right here, I don't care what kind of man you got. God going to bless it just for your obedience to him. All right. I'm moving on. So, so watch this. Going back into it, looking at the text in 11.8, it says that Abraham obeyed. All right. But it says by faith when he was called. To go out into a place which he should after receive for an inheritance, he obeyed. The obeyed grammatically is linked to when he was called. All the other words is just filler words to understand what was happening. But you could take all that out and say by faith, Abraham, when he was called, obeyed. That's the link right there. He was called and he obeyed. All right. The important thing about that phrase, when he was called, amen, is that it's written in the present tense. It's actually a present participle, all right? And a present participle is something that is written linguistically, amen, with an I-N-G on it, all right? You see, you see, it shouldn't be when he was called, English past tense, it should say, while he was being called, while he was being called, while God was calling. <laughs> watch this, watch this. It's written in the present tense, I mean. It's just so while God was calling, what did he do? He obeyed. That's a whole different understanding right there. Because the present tense of while he was calling shows us how long it took Abraham while he was calling, while he was being called, he obeyed. 
Commentators say it was an instantaneous obedience. It was an unhesitating obedience. It was a it was an unwavering, not pity patting around obedience. In fact, he didn't even wait for God to finish talking. While he was being called, he was packing and ready to go. You want to <coughs> delayed obedience, friends, is disobedience. When God tell you to do something, you do it. Not next week, not next month, not next year. You do it. And that's what made Abraham special in our Bible. He never waited to obey, y'all. All Abraham had to do was make sure it was God. And it was done. In your life, if you want to be an Abraham, amen, your obedience has to have a quick turnaround, baby. There's some things that God's still asking from y'all that you got on cue. You got waiting. You like an old printer, amen, you got jobs waiting. No, God want when he hit the button, he want you to spit it out. He want execution right away. When he told Abraham, take thy son, he was, he was on his way. Come on, boy. Go to a new land. All right, God, would you? <laughs> it's, a, it's not only I'm going to do what you say, but I ain't going to waste no time doing it. You see? Instant, immediate, unhesitating, unwavering. He started packing while God was talking to him. And this type of obedience is uncommon. Because in all the echelons of authority, not only will people not listen, not only will people, amen, not be ready, not only will people, amen, do what they want instead of what you want, all right? But sometimes they're going to do what you ask them, but they're going to do it on their time. And that's not obedience. That's not a good heart. You know, amen, when you're in authority, amen, and, and, and I'm going to tell you, the reason why I bring all this up and bring it into these different compartments of life is, because the way you treat authority is really emblematic of the way you treat God. I don't have to know your walk. I just watch the way you treat your husband. I don't have to know your walk. I just watch the way you treat your parents. I don't have to know your walk. I just watch the way you treat your boss at work. I don't have to know your walk. I just watch the way you treat pastor. Because the powers that be are ordained by God, and when you resist the powers, you are therefore resisting God. So when you treat your powers that way, you're really treating God that way. The same way you're sluggish as, at doing what they tell you to do, it's the same way you obey God, baby. Those things are just brought to the surface of your life to show you. These are, these are, these are, these are as though it were parables in real life to you. Physical illustrations to show you and teach you a spiritual lesson. You obey God, but you take a month to do it. You take a year to do it. He tell you to get something out of your life, amen, and you're still praying about it. Praying about what? He told you to get rid of it. He told you to get rid of her, get rid of him. He told you to not go there no more. And you still pity patting with the same thing when God been told you. That's not an Abraham heart, man. As soon as God told Abraham, I don't want that in your life, no, man, it was gone, man. Pack up, Hagar. But as we watch you in your individual capacities, as you deal with other people in authority, how is your obedience? You say, well, I do it, but how quick a turnaround do you have? Are you doing it on your time? See, because a, a, a symptom of rebellion is sluggishness and laziness. You know, you know, you know, you know you have to do it, 
But you're like, I'm going to do it on my time. That's rebellion. And rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft. You see? So when your authority asks you something, and it's in line with the scriptures and stuff, I'm not asking you to steal or nothing like that. Your boss asks you, your pastor asks you, your, your, your husband asks you, amen. And, and, and you want to, it, it, it's a test now. Okay, God, I'm on test. Let's see if I'm going to do exactly what was asked of me. And let's see how long it's going to take me to do it. You know? Because sometimes, amen, you watch a child. And a parent will come say, sit down. All right? And they'd be like, all right, yeah, I'm going to sit down. After I run around the sanctuary twice, I'm going to hit BJ on the head. Then I'm going to come back and I'm going to sit down. And then when you sit, when you sit down, they don't they cause all kind of misdemeanors and some felonies around the building. And you come back and I say, and you say, I told you to sit down. I am sitting down. And you're like, well, I guess they are. It's not only you doing what I tell you to do, but you do it when I tell you to do it. <coughs> For all the parents in here, this is how we do with Grace and Annalise. Just a little snapshot. Not that we perfect or nothing like that, because if you watch them close, hey, God, they rascal like their daddy. But listen, <laughs> this is how we taught them this, Brent. We say, look. We tell them something, they kind of like, kind of do it like, like the days ago. We tell them, look, look, reason why we on you like that, when we tell you to do something, because in case of an emergency, when you hear the command, we don't need you to waste no time. On, See, if a call coming, or somebody coming in the house with that iron or something like that, if I, if I tell you a command, it can't be no waste of time. If I tell you get down, if I tell you under the bed, if I tell you understand what I'm saying? It can't be no, no disobedience or no rebellion in that. I'm going to get it after I grab this off my dresser. And... and that's how would God want to work with us. What if he got to give you a directive that you got a second just to, I mean, you got a second, baby. You up in that God tell you move. And you're like, well, God, I don't feel like moving. I don't. <laughs> but if God can speak to you and say, move, and you're like, well, when you move, I move, God. Whoop. Oh, yeah, move again. Oh, whoop. Hey, hey. I'm moving with you, God, wherever you move, I'm moving. That's, that's how Abraham was. The response time. The response time. You know, the great car's got a good response time, Kelly. When you hit the gas, it's, it's zero to 60. Ah! I'm trying to teach it to you, baby, so you can understand. You know what I'm saying? When you turn the wheel, that wheel, it ain't, it ain't no Delta 88. You got it. Ah, yeah, ah. No. It take nothing, baby. This ain't a love boat, man. Turn that thing for a day, you put your hand on your hip in that car, you look. <laughs> ah. <coughs> Some of y'all old Delta 88 for God. <laughs> he can't turn you when he want to turn you. That's the whole idea of being stiff necked. And hard-hearted, Israel. See, when you're stiff-necked, you go one direction. And it's hard to turn you another direction. It's the obedience issue. It's been in our people for thousands of years. It's the reason they couldn't see their Messiah when he came. They couldn't follow Moses when he came. They couldn't hear Stephen when he preached and Jeremiah when he prophesied. 
It's because when they get going one direction, they're not sensitive. They don't have the obedience, the instantaneous obedience to be able to turn on a dime for God. And I think that God wants us to change tonight. You see, this faith is rare and is uncommon. And you see, there's an inextricable connection between faith and obedience, this type of obedience. See, those that really believe, amen, they're going to obey like this. <coughs> and the people with the most faith obey the most. They have the, the very least response time. Because they believe. Why would you think God would use this example of Abraham as being the father of faith? You see? He, he has the strongest faith in our Bible because his obedience was instantaneous and unwavering. You see the connection here? All right? Abraham obeyed. Come on, give y'all some glory, man. <clears throat> I don't know who that was for or what it is about, amen, but it's important. Second and final point, not knowing where he went. We call this going without knowing. Going without knowing. Not, not only did Abraham obey, all right, all right, he was called while being called, he obeyed. He went. All right? We call this going without knowing. All right? When God called Abraham, y'all, he didn't know where he was going. All right? God said, go, and he just put on his book sack and just, all right. <laughs> You're like, wait. <laughs> where are you going? It don't matter where I'm going. He telling me to go, and I'm going. All right? Commentators say that Abraham did not possess any information about the place where God was sending him. All right? God knew. In, re in retrospect, we know that it was the promised land to Shem. It was always Abraham's land, but Abraham never knew nothing about it. He was in Babylon. He was in Ur of the Chaldees. All right? Some commentators say he had no maps. He had no guide. He didn't know the best place to eat, the best bed and breakfast. He didn't know the safest neighborhoods to live in. Nothing. No help, no information. God told him, go. He didn't know where he was going, and he still went. You see? I give people asking Abraham, Abraham, where you going? I don't know. God leaving me. Amen. Abraham, you leaving your mom, your dad, your brother, your sister? You leaving your family? You leaving your country and your kin? Yep. Why? God leading me. You see? Oswald Chambers says this. He says, fate never knows where it is being led, but knows the who that is leading. All right? We don't know where. We don't know where, but we know the who. All right? All right? He didn't know where he was being called but he knew who was calling him, you see? And when we know the who, the where, the why, and the what doesn't matter. I gotta say that again. Some of y'all some of y'all missed that. When you know the who, the where, the why, and the what doesn't matter. Or it shouldn't matter, all right? All right? <coughs> You see, when following God, you shouldn't need an explanation. When you need an explanation when you're following God, it's because you don't have a revelation. All right? All right? When you get a revelation, you don't need no explanation. And a revelation is you see God. You understand who he is. You understand his wisdom, his power, his might. You, he ain't got to explain nothing to me, Jen. He just got to point me in a direction, and I'm going that direction. I don't even need to know the end 
of the road. He telling me go west, go east. Well, I'm going east. Well, where you going to end up? I don't care where. Because God done told me to go east. And that's how you got to be in your life, man. He tell you do this. You just do it. He tell you open this. You just open it. He tell you move it. You just move that. You see? Abraham didn't know where he went. You see? And one of the commentators say, when anybody moves from one country to another, they want to always know <coughs> information about the country they're going to. Is it better than the country that I'm living in now? How's the crime rate? How's the water? How's the food? The Bible says Abraham and Acts, none of that. He didn't care if it was a better land than the land that he was living because God was where he was going. Come on, give y'all some glory. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You don't need an explanation when you got a revelation. You see? See, in the book of Habakkuk, Habakkuk was questioning God. He said, God, why is it like this? Why are the stalls empty? Why, God, why? <clears throat> By the end of the book, God then read Habakkuk up and down. What Habakkuk said in the end is, I understand, God. Job was tripping with God where God was bringing him. <clears throat> and Job was, you know what I'm saying, if I could just reason with my maker, if I could just talk to him. Well, God fulfilled his request. God, said, God showed up. You understand what I'm saying? And when God showed up, he gave Job such a piece of his mind. Told Job up and down. He said, come on, array yourself in glory. Come on, you abase all that's proud. Come on. You grab the Leviathan like a man grab a bird. You do all those things because that's what I can do, Job. You can't do none of those things. You see? And after God told Job off, Job didn't need an explanation no more. He didn't even tell Job nothing about Job, what Job was going through, nothing about his pain, nothing about his sickness. All he gave Job was a revelation of who he was and Job said, I have heard about you in time past, but now I have seen you with my own eyes, and now I understand. I understand. You ain't got to tell me of, of no explanation about what I'm going through. You God, and I'm not. When you get all wheezy and stressed out and you want to question God, God, where I'm at, all that, uh-uh. Get in your Bible, baby. Get in your Bible. Get in your Bible. Get in your Bible. And get yourself a revelation. You see? That's what Abraham had. You see? And when you get a revelation, you know that when God calls his people, he don't ever give his people the whole journey mapped out, plotted out every turn beforehand, though. That's not how God does things. We don't walk by sight. We walk by faith. You see? You see, it's the steps of the righteous man that's ordered by God. In this life, amen, like he, tell, he didn't tell Abraham it's going to be here, there, you're going to have all this. Nah, just go. And I'm going to order you your steps. Every time you go to move, amen, and, and you walk out, it's going to seem like nothing under you. <laughs> but I'm the God that makes something out of nothing. Hey, God, the earth. He said, I hang the earth on nothing. <laughs> and every time you walk out, oh, God, how this is going to happen? How are we going to do this? How are we going to pay this? How are we going to make this work? And God said, don't worry about that. Stop looking for an explanation and get yourself a revelation. I don't... If I told you how I'm going to do it, you wouldn't understand it anyway. Just, just step. The steps of the right man. And you stepping and you walking and you nervous. But under your God is doing this. <coughs> the steps. The steps. He ain't giving you no long-term strategy. It's the steps. It's the steps he's giving you. You see? 
That's what faith is all about. Abraham knew not where he was going. You see? And some people, you look at me like, oh, man, they got so much. And they just, they plan this thing all out. Wait up, wait up, man, wait up. You do the best you can administratively to plan it out, yeah. But many are the plans of a man's heart. It's the Lord that's going to determine the way. You be diligent in what you can do, amen. But uh, for, for, for those that's, that's really successful, it's a faith walk. I'm just heading the direction he's telling me. And I'm not looking for explanation. I know because since I'm going the way he wants me to go, he going to meet me there. Every step of the way, every step of the way. I can't tell you what's going to happen tomorrow, but I know who holds tomorrow. And, and it's just going to have to be a faith walk. Listen, thy word is a lamp unto my it's not a highway being for you to see miles away. That's why he says sufficient for the day is evil enough. What you worried about tomorrow? And all that. Baby, you better look at what's in front of you. He never knew where he was going, B. We just going to walk it out. We just going to walk it out. When Peter walked on water, every step was just a fate walk. You know, some of y'all waiting to, to open a business and waiting to, to move out on fate on something. And you're waiting too long. And God telling you go and you're missing the opportunity. You're waiting too long. He told Israel, go possess the land. Israel like, but over there, the, the, the giant, you ain't even by them people. Just walk in the land, he's telling you. Just go in the land. Just do what I'm telling you to do. Be listen, be right. Just do what I'm telling you. Just do you don't know what I'm gonna do. The moment you walk in, I could obliterate everybody. You don't just waiting for an explanation. It gotta be how long? How long? Abraham wasn't like that, y'all. He wasn't like that. He obeyed God, and he moved out when God told him to move out. To conclude, listen, there's just two ways to live this life. Two ways. You're going to live it by faith, or you're going to live it by sight. That's just the two ways. And my prayer for you is that you would live this life by faith in God. Hanging on his promise. Hanging on his promises, man. You just, you know, you just, you just, because if you're living it by sight, you might be successful in a few things, yeah, man. But you're going to only get what your physical capabilities can offer. That's all. And if you don't have a bunch of physical capabilities, it ain't going to offer much. You see? We got people wanting to rely on their physical capabilities, but you, what you got? What, you, what do you have? You got high intellect? You got a bunch of degrees? What, what do you have? You see me? All I got is God. I, 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 I can't operate on faith. I can't see anyway. But I can't operate on faith. I mean, I can't operate on sight. It's got to be faith. And the people that can learn that, if you can learn that, the people that know their God, have a revelation of their God. They shall do great exploits. They shall do great exploits. You're going to have things and you're going to do things that's not earthly possible. Amen. They're going to look at you and say, that's not supposed to be happening. You'll say, oh, they're so smart. Not smart. Uh-uh. Uh, I believe. I believe. I'm mean, believing. Uh, get that. Okay. Right. Okay. Do that. Okay. Walk this way. Okay. Run this way. Okay. Jump. I ain't jump. Y'all ain't gonna jump that like that. <laughs> it's a fate wall. It's a fate wall. I'm gonna let y'all go. Yeah, but I'm gonna let y'all go. Y'all believe. I'm gonna let y'all go and believe. <laughs> You know what stopped that kind of fate walk? Fear. Fear. Yeah. And a lot of y'all should be on track 
to have a lot more than what you have. Yeah. Yeah. But you're walking by sight. You know, when you're in a high place, they tell you a strategy. They say, don't look. You're operating on sight, man. You're operating on sight, man. And whenever I enter a situation, TPD always telling me how it's never going to work, how nobody has ever done it, how much it's going to cost, and this and that. Whenever you start hearing that, you got to block that type of stuff out. Watch this, Kimmy, because I ain't paying for it anyway. I got a rich father. Y'all don't, <laughs> don't know. He, he owned a cat on a thousand years. I, hey, God. Hey, God. I got a rich daddy. And when I need it, it always show up right on time. I'm, I'm walking, seem like I'm about to fall. Whoop, I got you. 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 All you need to be sure of is when you hear him, when you're listening and you hear him, be ready. Be ready. Be ready. Your vision dream, be ready. This is your spiritual position like this. Some of y'all laying down. You're not even ready. You be ready. You be ready. You be ready. And as soon as you hear him, you're like a football player waiting for the snap. You be ready. You be ready. You're like a track athlete waiting for the gun to go off. You be ready. You be ready. you like a basketball player ready for the, for the throw up and the tip off. Amen. You be ready. It's a readiness. I got to shoot, hallelujah, to start the race, Israel. But he's asking who's ready. Who's ready? I'm going to give you the victory. I'm going to give you the success. But you can't be standing around not ready. Just focus, man. Just focus. Focus on him. And I'm, I'm ready. Oh, God, I'm ready. When, when we racing at the house, amen, we just looking at the person down the street that's like this, and we just ready. Oh, goodness. And Omar, will start before you, before it get, before. <coughs> Annalise, he'll start before it go, if you don't, but he, but he, he, Israel, get ready. Get ready. Get ready. And when the command come from glory, when he tell you to launch out, go get that license. When he tell you to launch out, build that house. When he tell you to launch out, buy that land. When he tell you to launch out, buy that business. When he tell you to launch out, amen, submit to that ministry calling. When he tell you to launch out, amen, not fear, not fear, but faith, not fear, but faith. I know you're going to be with me. I am ready to execute the command. Come on, give y'all some glory in this house. <laughs> Hallelujah. That was Abraham, amen? That was Abraham. And the command, amen, that you got to be so ready to fulfill is the command of the gospel. He tells you, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. Do like Abraham. Don't wait till you're a certain age. Don't wait till tomorrow. You might not see tomorrow. Today is the day of salvation. Ye that hear his voice, 
Harden not your heart as in the day of provocation. Make your obedience to the gospel immediate and instantaneous. Somebody would say with me, say, Lord, Lord thank you for loving me. Thank you for speaking to my heart. I admit I'm a sinner, but I know that you love me and you died for me on the cross. You was buried in the grave, and on the third day, you rose with all power. Lord, save me, a sinner. I believe in you. I trust you. Give me a new life, a new heart, and a new start. In Jesus' name. Amen, amen, amen. Love y'all saints. Bless. Woo. Cause his face to shine upon you. Be gracious to you. Lift up his confidence upon you. With shalom. Happy New Year, Philly.